Stephen, tell us about your own fitness because of the really concern at the weekend. Um, I just took a knock on the bone on my pelvis, and um, although it wasn't any serious, it's one of them that kind of the ache stays there for a while. But I've had a bit of treatment since I arrived, and it's feeling much better. So hopefully I'll be back in volume training today. Just tell us how important this game against the Czech Republic is. Is it win or bust? Um, it's a massive game. Um, you can't, I don't think you can turn around and say it's win or bust because there's more games to be played, and, and um, you've got to respect every team that's in the group, so um, it's a massive game, it's come, it's come down to this, but I think if uh, at the start of the campaign we were in this situation, we would, we would definitely be happy. Um, I think what it shows is that we've got a fully fit squad and every player's been here and any wee injuries are having to set anybody back. With everybody's wanting to play and wanting to be involved in a full house and, and Saturday, I'm sure it'll create a good occasion. Has it been a good thing that Scotland haven't had a competitive game in 11 months, so they've had lots of friendlies to get together, or would you rather have had more competitive games? It's, it's a difficult one when obviously the manager's got to pick where ideally he wants all the fixtures to be in. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be too disappointed with the length of time. We've, we've played a couple of games in Ireland and although they were class as friendlies, it was a wee bit extra spice in them with it being the home nations. And um, But no, I think the whole squad's ready to go and the meetups we've had have definitely brought us forward as a team and um, more to do with the team bonding from that to, to the football we've played has is, is all been a progression over the last year and um, I don't think anybody can argue that we have came so much further than maybe we thought. There's been a lot of fallout since the last game against the Czechs in Prague, like four six zero formations etc. How does Scotland approach this one? Do they go all out for it because the team points is is what they really need, or do you try and pull your way into the game? I, I think no matter what formation or that we play, the, f the first 10, 15 minutes you want to be steady and and just get the kind of passing going and um, hopefully create a few chances. But I think um, since since the game um, in Prague, I think we've shown that we're a team that do play more attacking and and we get although we play with one striker, we get bodies forward and. And we have, no matter what players play in midfield, we've, we've got the legs and, and the energy from the boys that play in there to get up and down the park. So, although although we've got bodies back defending, we've we've um, got a good number going forward as well, and we're a threat. Yeah, Stephen, now there is under Craig O'Dean, Luke touched on the 4 6 or whatever combination it was. In fact, do you think now there is a settled Scotland way of playing tactics and formation? How would you describe that? I think we are more settled in the way. Um, we've been playing recently with, like I said, the one striker and the five in midfield. But um, it's, I don't think it's a very defensive-minded formation. It's, it's as much attacking as it is um, defensive. With, like I said again, we we we've got the legs to to get up and down the park, and just not only the performances we've put in, but the amount of goals we've been scoring and chances we've been creating. We've we've definitely found a a good mixture there with with that formation and. I think it would be wrong of the manager to kind of change it. Peter was saying that this doubleheader that's come up is probably one of the most important doubleheaders in recent history. Is that how you characterise it? It's definitely massive for, for for everybody involved, but um, I think it's maybe the first f first time in a while that we've everybody's been excited about it and and maybe thinks that we can go and do something, and, and the players are definitely of that mindset uh, set that. We can go in these two games and get full points. Um, we know we'll need to play well and um, we'll need to be at our best, but we're def definitely capable of doing it. Is it nice to be in the air with Yeah, it is. Um, it'll be entertaining watching, I suppose, for all the boys tonight. But um, on the whole, the boys are settled and um, I'm sure there'll be one or two late surprises, but um, thankfully I'll not be involved, I don't think. It's it's nice to hear these things, but um, I'm I'll be the first to know that uh, a couple of bad games or a bad game you'll be out it, and and that's another strength that, that Scotland's got at the moment that we've got so many good players wanting to fight and want to be here. And, and playing the squad, you just need to look. Chris Commons has been unfortunate to miss out this one, but in, in the boys we've had, Snoddy's come in and done really well in his, his first start for Scotland as well. So there's definitely competition there, and um, it's, that's good. That's what drives all the players on. That 
you need to perform your best in training and in games to kind of keep your spot. Do you think that kind of highlights that nobody can take anything for granted when you look at what happened with, with Chris Collins considering four moves on just a couple of months ago? Exactly, that, that's, that, that's a prime example to kind of go for. And you've also got some of the younger boys here that are hungry to get involved. Baz Barron's came in and every time he's played he's not done anything wrong, he's done really well. So I'm sure he'll be in the manager's thoughts and, and there'll be a few others. But like I said, you need to just perform in every every training session that's there and every match that comes along. You've got to show that the manager can, can rely on you and, and that's that's what I was trying to do, definitely. Stephen, Dan Fletcher's back in. How important, obviously he's not, he's not playing much, how important is it that he's back and what is it that he brings to the team and the, and the squad? It's, a, it's massive for us that he's back and that just shows that everybody that is available is wanting to be here and want to fight and, and know what kind of chance we have of getting through and qualifying and get, or even making the playoffs. Um, and he's, he's massive in terms of his leadership. Um, he's a kind of model professional um, and just his experience, it helps um, everybody involved. I think there's not been too many squads he's been in with in terms of a lot of the younger boys that have finally made the squad and kind of been in the squad. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll help them drastically. And, over this kind of ten-day period, he'll, he'll just show them what what we've missed over the kind of last year. It's been a difficult week for Scottish football and the national team, feeling the, the weight of expectation now that to try and uh, repair the, the reputation of Scottish football. Uh, it's not really been mentioned too much um, in the squad, but it's it's taken a bit of a kicking um, the Scottish football over the last week or so. But I think if you look at it, Rangers last year, we competed with Man United and Valencia and, and the games we played them, so I don't think there's that drastic measure. There, there is things that need to change within the league for, from all the way through Scottish football, but we've known that for more than the last week, to be honest. Um, so I think it's it's taking a kicking, but the players will just keep going on and doing well. It'll, a few good results will hopefully start changing folks' opinions. Yeah, one win for the national team, it seems that the whole country will be behind you. Is, is that something that that really needs to happen to, to get the whole country behind you? To be honest, no matter what state of football is in in Scotland, you need everybody to be pushing in the right direction. And Obviously, there's times that criticism is fair and needs to be said, but there's other times that you need to think that if we want to make this right, we, we all need to be pushing the right way. We all need to back everybody involved with Scottish football. And There's no point of slating off the, the country's football when you're trying to get signings in and things like that. So if you're giving the country a bad name, there's no what chance have you got of bringing the better players coming to the country.